Looking at epic displays while visiting your favorite toy shops is a routine that just never gets old. And in the case of toy traders in Langley, British Columbia, Canada, the joyous nature of this routine is amplified tenfold. With that, we're back to have an extended look at the store's all-encompassing, expansive display that combines a broad array of brilliantly crafted custom settings and backdrops with the wide range of vehicles and figures from the original 1982 through 1994 G.I. Joe, a Real American Hero toy run. The previous tour that I did back in the fall of 2021 has become the most popular video on my channel. As such, this time I've decided to do an extended tour to take a closer look at a few aspects that I didn't get to look as closely at in the previous video, as well as taking a walk upstairs at the display case housing the owner's O-ring figure setup for the purpose of enhancing this experience. Let's begin. I'll make note that as impressive as the G.I. Joe setup is, it is only part of what the store has to offer. The rest of the 17,000 square foot floor space contains aisle upon aisle of sales product in both vintage as well as modern figure style and further displays spanning some other walks of pop culture, some of which have also been covered in previous videos. And while I do intend to look through the 1982 to 1994 American releases, such as the tower of what I count to be 13 terror drones plus a 14th off to the side, I'd like to have a look at a handful of items that I wasn't able to hone in on during the last tour. In particular, there's a row of vintage boxes on a shelf just below the high ceiling of the shop. I know I wasn't able to get too close to get a sharper set of footage, but many of you are already familiar with the box art, either from your own collections or just seeing them in toy aisles as a child. However, there's just something breathtaking and eye-catching about seeing them displayed side by side like this, stacked up, especially when looking at the boxes of very large playsets that are displayed over here and perched up along the side wall. As my appreciation for overseas product has grown over the last little while, here's the European-based Action Force Z Force headquarters, and in behind are some of the other Z Force vehicles such as the ATC, the Jeep, the Rapid Fire motorcycle, as well as some SAS sub-team vehicles like the Panther and Mobile Missile System, among others. I somehow missed it last time, but here's the Action Force Space Force Triad Fighter being pursued by the all-too-epic-looking Robo Skull hanging and displayed beautifully beneath the row of vintage boxes above. Here's the bridge layer and slugger over top of a custom creek filled with some Cobra forces in it, and there's also an Arashi Kage style setup over here with some figures off to the bottom right, and this whole setup just looks extremely gorgeous and epic as ever. As we look back at the rest of the setup, the Night Force items are still over here on the far right like they were last time on the previous tour, perched atop a custom Night Force USS flag and have their boxes displayed nicely behind them. And beneath this flag, as well as other USS flags adjacent to it, we can see some vehicles behind the plexiglass lower hanging display. It'll be a bit hard to see them with the reflection, but I think you as viewers get the general idea. The multiple USS flags here show the impressive custom blast effects and results in a dynamic scene that creates a nice bit of intensity and feeling of desperation on the battlefield, thus bringing our heart's imagination and desires to life. And naturally, few things are more iconic than seeing a deployment of Sky Strikers launching to battle an aerial group of Rattlers. Hey, what can I say? Some rivalries just never get old and remain as timeless as ever. Interestingly, the middle of the setup, we have a few other pop culture franchises, namely some Clash of the Titans stuff, Indiana Jones figures and playsets, as well as A-Team figures and vehicles, among the various other toy properties that were available during the 1980s. For the most part, they all seem to scale well with the 3 and 3 quarter inch G.I. Joe figures. As we look at the rest of the city setup, we see a ton of our iconic favorites, be it his tanks, maulers, stingers, and many others, creating that perpetual, never-ending battle between the forces of G.I. Joe and Cobra. Here's a look at the Defiant Space Shuttle launching off with the custom blast effects and all. And as huge as the Defiant is, it's interesting to see it just blend in 
almost like a normal size vehicle among the setup that is this epic. And speaking of big vehicles, we've also got some more of them here, such as the Mobile Command Center, Rolling Thunder, Thunderclap, Mean Dog, and a few other mid-size ones such as the Warthog, Persuader, and more. Honestly, much like the last tour, there's really no words that any person on this earth could use to describe what I'm looking at here. My heart simply races at an accelerated pace when panning the camera around to look at everything that you're seeing. And while nothing beats seeing this incredibly dedicated setup in person, I am trying my absolute best to recreate the experience for viewers, all the while honing in on some specifics that I didn't get to cover the last time. Whether you're a hardcore fan of G.I. Joe, a casual fan, or even someone who didn't discover it until much later on in life, there's just so much to appreciate here with this colossal display setup. Everything from the rocky terrain, to the lifelike trees and bushing to flesh out the scenery, to the damaged buildings in the city display, it's all here to appreciate. What I'm hoping to accomplish here is to create a video tour that you can share with your friends and experience the dream G.I. Joe Battlefield setup that your mind's eye has created, now all too real and right in front of you. With that, I need to go upstairs and have a look at the owner's vintage figure setup, and it also happens to be where he and his staff have put the vintage sales section of figures and vehicles, which we'll look at momentarily. This is the wall of figures spanning from 1982 onwards, and I realize he doesn't go all the way to 1994, which is common for many collectors who stop at a specific year in terms of their collection. As we look through, you can probably pick out some of the ones that you either own now, used to own as a kid, or have seen in your friends' collections over the many decades that this franchise has been around. The various iconic heroes, villains, as well as multiple sub-factions are all here for display, along with their file cards behind them. What's cool about this particular figure display is that you can walk right up to it and either crouch down to see some of your favorites or stand at eye level to see some of the others. Unlike the impressive display downstairs that while you can look at it for hours, you do need to look upwards until your neck hurts a little, but it's all worth it, in my opinion. Also included within the display case are the miniature G.I. Joe figures that were packed in with the regular figures later on in the original run. I know some collectors have a bit of a soft spot for these, so I figured I'd show them off while looking at the rest of the tour. There is quite a bit for sale here as well. I know that the sales section can alternate between being pretty full at times, bare bone at other times, or half full like it is at the time of this particular tour. Either way though, it's always fun to ask a staff member to unlock one of these cases and flip through the multiple pegs at your heart's desire and pick out the item that you need. All in all, there's just so much to see and enjoy in this upstairs section. I'm still unsure what they're going to do with the row of Defiant Space Shuttles up here, as they have been there for quite a long while now, but it gives us a glimpse of the future if they do intend to sell them. There's also a ton of modern style G.I. Joe stuff for sale here in the upstairs section, ranging from previously released mass retail items to convention exclusives and even vintage foreign releases, among others. It's times like these where a collector wonders if they ever did win the lottery, just how much of that windfall they would unload just emptying out the figures in these cases. Now while this is a G.I. Joe related tour, I'll point out that there is still a ton of other product across the multiple toy properties that this store specializes in. As a collector, it's easy to appreciate just how wide the selection is and just how much this particular store has to offer. As we journey back downstairs, here's one final look at the panoramic wall display that just never gets old. I find any time I look at this wall, I'll walk slowly to one side, take it all in, then turn back around, walk the other way, look at it all a second time, then a third, fourth, and so on, just to pick out the things that I missed before. Bear in mind that this store has been in operation since the 1990s, and I first discovered it at its previous location back in 2005. Then I continued to come back when it moved into its present location years later. But no matter how many times I come here, walking through the G.I. Joe display setup just never seems to get old. And even though this is my second time doing a video tour here, I doubt that anyone else would feel that it's gotten old. Nor will it probably ever feel that way when looking in here and absorbing every aspect of this setup. Ultimately, even with a semi-extended tour compared to my last outing, you could literally walk the aisles of this store and look at the displays, all while flipping through the rows and pegs of toys for hours and hours and never be done. You could come back, 
look through it all again, and still find things that you didn't see the previous time. Even looking at the displays above the shelves across the many aisles and along the walls in various displays and sales cases, you'll find something new every single time. Even talking to members of the staff who work here multiple times a week, they still find new things that were put up when they were off shift. That's just how dynamic this place is. Anyway, I knew that this was a video topic that a few of my friends wanted me to come back and revisit in a somewhat longer format than the initial six and a half minute tour that I did before. And as such, I'm back and gladly back, blissfully looking at these toys once again, I'll point out. And before I sign off, special thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names can be found in the description section of this video. Visit patreon.com slash toy connections if you'd like to see your name in the description section as well and to also unlock bonus behind the scenes toy connections content and other benefits. You can also click the join button next to my channel name to unlock specialized badges and custom emojis for your use in the comment section of any Toy Connections video or live stream. Otherwise, that takes us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, have a look at some of my other content here. Subscribe if you already haven't, press that like button to spread this video to more viewers and share it with your friends. Otherwise, yo jo, and I'll see you again soon with some more of my favorite toys. Thanks again and take care.